Welcome to St. John the Evangelist, the oldest and most vibrant Catholic community in Baltimore County, Maryland. On behalf of Father Pete Literal, our pastor, and the entire parish staff, we want you to know that you are welcome, loved, and prayed for. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected all of us. At this time, please take a moment to pray for all those who have died from this deadly virus.
Indeed, give it up for the St. John Brass. <laughs> Happy Easter. Happy Easter. As a prelude this morning, we'd like to feature uh, Gene Hogger uh, and the music ensemble on uh, Lauren Daigle's Love Like This. Miss Janine Hogger. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Our celebrant for this liturgy is Father Pete, our pastor. As a reminder, during this phase of reopening, congregational singing and gestures of touch have been discontinued. We still encourage you to participate <coughs> in this liturgy by praying the prayers, listening to the word of God, and celebrating the Eucharist. We are united with all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Please stand. <laughs>
welcome to our celebration of the resurrection of the Lord. And we do welcome also our brothers and sisters who are joining us by your live streaming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we gather to give thanks for this wonderful grace and life that come to us from the resurrection. So to prepare ourselves for the Paschal Feast of the Eucharist, let us now humble ourselves before the Lord, and let us give thanks for God's mercy through Jesus. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection 
may through the renewal brought by your spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good things and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible. Not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sin through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please listen to the word of God as we proclaim Psalm 118. Let us rejoice. <laughs> St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised from Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not as what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
There are three times throughout the year in the church that we hear a sequence between the second reading and the gospel. This is Victime Pascali Laudis, the traditional Easter sequence. Victime Pascali Laudis, Emolent Christi a lamb the sheep redeemeth, Christ who only is sinless, reconciled sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring. Quid bidisti in BC? The tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Angeli contestes, sudarium et vestes. Yes, Christ, my hope is a reason to Galilee he goes before you. Schemus Christum surrexise, amor tuis vere, tu nomis victorex miserere. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciples went out and came to the tomb. They both ran but the other disciples ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter arrived after him. He went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciples also went in, 
the one who had arrived at the tomb first. And he saw and believed. For they did not understand the scriptures that he had to rise from the dead. My dear friends, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning and saw the stone removed from the tomb. Whenever we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, what always struck me is the reflection that stone that was rolled away, it was a large stone. And we are told elsewhere that it would have taken two or three men to move it in any case. It was guarded by soldiers. Even if they were asleep, that would be very difficult to do. The stone was rolled away. But this was not rolled away simply to permit resurrection. It was rolled away to indicate resurrection. Think about it. If the stone had not been rolled away, no one would know about the resurrection. Yes, the body would have been gone, but no one would know. No one would discover if the stone was not rolled away. But with that stone rolled away and its emptiness is there for all to see. My dear brothers and sisters, the fact of the resurrection is very essential to our Christian faith. If Jesus is not risen from the dead, all the things that we believe in, all the things that we are doing will be of no value. And that is, I believe, why the stone was rolled away so that all of us now would come to believe. This is the grace that God would want to share with all of us even on this time. During this time of pandemic, most especially the reality of the resurrection that Christ has risen from the dead is very important because resurrection gives hope to people who believe that despite of what we are going through, this pandemic has done to everything, to family life, to church life, to business. Because of the resurrection, we have the power now and the grace to believe that there is hope. Yes. Thank God that stone was rolled away because it opens for us to see that the Lord has risen. And because he has risen, he has overcome death. It brings you hope for all of us. For whatever we may be going through, the hope brought about by the resurrection is made clear to all of us. The stone was rolled away. Thank God. And I believe this is something that we all need to reflect seriously. This is now our calling to prepare the ground for others to know that Christ is risen. This is our calling now that we 
must continuously roll the stone so that many would come to know that the Lord is risen. This is the grace that I would want you to take with you. The grace that the Lord is risen. The grace that brings hope to our family situation or our community situation. Whatever may be happening in our lives on a very personal manner or basis, because of the resurrection, it opens door for us. It removes the clouds of doubt from us. It gives us that blessed assurance that everything will be fine. The Lord has risen. And we must continuously now be the one to start rolling the stone so that many would come to know that the Lord is risen. We came to know because somebody told us, someone rolled the stone for us. So on this Easter Sunday, my prayer for you is that you may act to live your lives and faith like a rolled away stone for others. That your presence here this morning may make people wonder or understand what you and me believe in. We are here celebrating this greatest feast, celebrating the greatest event in history of the universe, celebrating the fact of our own redemption. So we must rejoice but we must also be committed that the story of the resurrection must be told and retold so that what God would want us to see, His only begotten Son given into the world, suffered and died for us, has now risen so that we may find the new life brought about by Him. Let us rejoice. Let us remove the doubt. Let us take away all those things that brings worries and burden to us. The Lord has risen. He has risen indeed to bring new life for those who believe. Amen. Instead of professing our faith every Easter, all baptized persons are asked to renew the promises that we made when we were all baptized. So my dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with Him to newness of life. Now that we have received the new life brought by the resurrection of Jesus. Let us renew the promises we made in baptism, and that is to reject Satan and his work and to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. For every question that I will pose, we will respond, I do. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin, and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried? rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. 
God, powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all our sins. May He also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. made a boo-boo. Please stand. <laughs> we are now going to pray for all our needs in the radiant splendor of this most holy day. Let us cry out to the Lord whose mighty deeds we have seen in the resurrection of Jesus Christ as we respond. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church of God, under the guidance of Pope Francis and our bishop, may our lives always be song of joy to the Lord, who has triumphed over death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized, who have entered into death and resurrection of Christ, and for those who have entered into full communion in the Catholic Church, especially our new neophyte, Jim Johnson, may they always walk with Christ in newness of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have struggled to have hope this Easter because of illness, stress, or worries, may the shadow of gloom and suffering yield to a springtime of freedom and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who cannot be together with loved ones, family, or friends this Easter, especially all our military personnel. May the risen Lord protect them from all harm and bring them safely home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people discerning the call of priesthood, deaconate, or consecrated life, may they respond with generous hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. John the Evangelist Church, community, preparing for the bicentennial celebration of faith, mission, and community. May we set our hearts of giving thanks for the gifts of God to our community and bearing witness to the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those departed who await the manifestation of Christ's glory, especially the benefactors of the mission of St. John, May they receive fulfillment of the blessed hope bestowed in baptism. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I would like to ask you to pray for a friend of mine who died last week on account of COVID. His name is Adonis Roque. I would like to ask you for a prayer for his eternal repose. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All-powerful God creator and source of life, on this most holy day, you conquered the power of sin and death in the glorious resurrection of your Son. Hear our prayers and flood the world with the undying love of your Son, Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> As we reflect on Father Pete's Easter message, we offer to you, Defender.
come back if you call it my victory. Oh. You go my greatest defense it leads me from the dry wilderness and all I did was pray all I did was worship all I did was bow Pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb 
who has taken away the sins of the world by dying. He has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and workings of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather the people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Evangelist, our patron saint, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world.
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Francis, our Pope, William, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of these families whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now coming together as one God's family and formed by the divine teaching, we dare now to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, peace. I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. And peace of Christ be with you. Behold Jesus, the love of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that she should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
before we distribute the Holy Communion, we will be asking our brothers and sisters who are following us via live streaming to pray the prayer of act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separate from you. Amen. As a reminder for the communion procession, we will start with sections 1, 3, and five, and then sections two, four, and six. So please follow your section, sections two and four, stay put until after the, the previous sections have moved.
Please be seated. For our meditation this morning, we are presenting Washed by the Water. The psalmist says, clap your hands, all you nations. Clapping is a good thing. So remember, if you feel the spirit, please clap along with us at the appropriate time. This is normally sung by my brother Peter. Peter is not with us today, so I'm going to try and do this a little justice as well. Washed by the Water. Daddy was a preacher, she was his wife, just trying to make a world a little better, you know, shine a light. People started talking. Just to hear their own voice. Those people tried to judge my father, you know, they made the wrong choice. Though it might be painful, you know, the time will always tell. Those people have long since gone, my father never failed. Even when the rain falls, even when the flood starts rising. renewed by the Paschal mystery, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And before I do my final blessing, I'd like really to thank all our volunteers and all the ministers who assisted us in making our Easter celebration safe and vibrant. And we are very grateful truly to all the support of our parishioners in stepping up, especially in volunteering, in making sure all our programs during the Holy Trido are well done so that everybody, whether at home or in person here in church, we are able to celebrate in a glorious manner the Holy Week. And I thank all the ministries, the liturgy committee, the music ministry, wonderful. <laughs> and all. We thank all the lecturers, the Eucharistic ministers, our servers, sacristans, all our ushers. We thank you for the wonderful work. Our live streaming is always uh, available because of the production crew, the ministry that we have established here during pandemic so that virtual mass can be made available for other people. And we thank also our volunteers or sponsors of Easter flowers, making sure our altar is beautiful.
beautiful and decorated wall. We thank Mr. John Rutkowski, who really single-handedly prepared this uh, decoration. And this weekend, we are grateful to all of you because not only of Easter coming here in this celebration, because this weekend is also our casserole and food pantry collection for our daily bread and for our St. Elizabeth of Hungary. Two weeks from now is uh, the opening of our bicentennial celebration. It is a 12-month period. April 18 is called Heritage Mass. We invite everybody to come and give thanks for the gift of faith, mission, and community to St. John the Evangelist Church. Masses on that weekend will be Saturday, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and 7 o'clock on Sunday, a special mass, 7 o'clock in the morning. And then the final mass will be the 9 o'clock, presided by our Archbishop and by pastors who have served here at this church community. There will be no 1130 mass because we will have the blessing of the chapel and also the, the Paris history display and the reception. Speaking of reception, would like really to prepare something good for you. But we would need you to call us so that we have a proper count of people who will be at the reception. Please call the office and determine how many in your families will be attending the reception. This will help us better prepare, and I thank you for that. Again, one final word. I thank you as your pastor for all the support that you have been providing, especially during this pandemic period. I know it's difficult for all of us, for especially for all of you, but I thank you for your financial support that we are able to operate, continuously operate our faith community and become responsive to the pastoral needs of our people. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you and I wish you truly a blessed, blessed Easter. Please convey this to your members of the family. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Alleluia. until the presider's presence has exited the sanctuary. Please follow the usher's guidance for dismissal, and we wish you a very happy Easter. Mm -hmm.